Hey, 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 it's Rebecca, and you're listening to Resilient by Design. Today, I want to walk you through how to deal with an unhappy client. I think, unfortunately, in this industry, um, because we are service-based more often than not, we are continually encountering unhappy, dissatisfied, or sometimes what we would label difficult clients. Am I right? (laughs) I mean, nobody is perfect. And what I will also say is I do believe that when you work in residential construction or residential decor, it is something that people are living in these spaces. It is their primary residence or their cottage or their home. And so they're really personally invested and connected. So sometimes it could mean that they, the client can turn a, what is it? A mountain out of a molehill? You know what I mean? Whereas I think it's quite different when you're working with corporate design, commercial design, because people are not as personally invested. So as a result, it makes our job sometimes a little bit challenging. And I think as creatives, we tend to get a little bit defensive. So I'm going to share today with you, you know, sort of my tips on how to deal with an unhappy client. And I also share with you an exact email, hopefully my client's not listening, that I sent to a client who was unhappy in a certain situation that I think really diffused the bomb. And I think it was really great. I sort of pulled the wording together with the help of people in my life, as well as Google. So I'm going to share that email writing with you in this episode as well. I hope this helps you deal with your challenging clients. Enjoy. All right. (laughs) I'm Rebecca Hay, and I've built a successful interior design business by trial and error, podcasts, online courses, and so many freaking books. Over the last decade, I've grown from an insecure student to having false starts to careers, and now I'm finally in the place where I want to be. Throughout my journey, it's been pretty obvious that I'm passionate about business and helping other entrepreneurs do the same. Each week, I'll share tangible takeaways from my own experience and the experiences of other badass women to help you build your confidence and change your business. Are you as tired as I am working in a bubble? I mean, shoot. It's time to maybe socially distance with other people. That is why I love coming to the Collective Workspace. If you are someone who is looking for a little bit of stimulation, a lot of beauty, the Collective Workspace is a really great place to go. It is a co-working space for designers, architects, and builders in Toronto, and they're opening a second location this spring. They have flex workspace and offices starting at $120 a month. There's boardrooms, a podcast booth, which is where I am right now, concierge storage, and a trade-only design library. You can find out more, or if you want to book a tour, go to thecollectivetio.com. Whew, okay. We've all been there, right? Like, we've all had those clients that oh, we want to label as difficult or the wrong client. And I can tell you, we're never going to not have those clients. So first off, just accept the fact that there will always be difficult situations, difficult people that you will have to deal with when you're running a design business. That is just the reality. And, you know, I I mentioned this in the intro. Part of it is, especially when it's residential, um, people are really connected to every element. Um, I can tell you also from experience that it's much worse when the client is living through a renovation. Those have been the times where I've had the most difficult time working with a client through issues that pop up because they get, and I, now I've started getting better at this from my experience is I now educate when someone brings us on or not even brings us on when somebody has a consultation with me, uh, for a renovation project, I basically scare the bejesus out of them because (laughs) I want them to know that I do not advise they live through a reno. And if they do, here are the, all the horrific things you can expect Uh, because I want people to really understand what they're getting into. I mean, heck, have you watched my Hey Home Reno video series on YouTube? I will make sure Vera links it here if you haven't watched it. 
I can't believe I actually haven't talked about it on the podcast. Oh my gosh, Rebecca. Bad marketing brain. Um, I filmed my own home renovation. We did phase one, which is the second floor of the house over the winter. And like, can I just tell you like freaking frick? It was long. It dragged on. There was, it was stressful. It, and it wasn't even a big reno. And so to me, that was a really big eye opener that I need to educate my clients ahead of time. Anyhow, that aside, situations will arise. Maybe the client sees the hardwood going in and they're not happy with the variation in the light and the dark wood. Or maybe um, the lights are installed and they're like, hmm, the scale is not what I was expecting. It's too big. They're too big for the island, I think. Meanwhile, you're like, they look amazing. You're on crack. Um, I'm trying to think of a million situations that I've been in or a situation where it could be something that has nothing to do with your design, but it could have everything to do with the trades, right? Like, oh, the client's unhappy because the painter didn't do a good job with the edging and now the paint is bubbling or they installed the vanity and when they installed the kick plate, they scratched the floor and they damaged the tile. Spoken from very recent experience. Uh, You know anything can go wrong, things can happen. Also, someone could receive, let's say this just happened to us, the drapery, which is why this is top of mind, which is why I'm recording a podcast about it. The drapery is installed. We think it looks fabulous. And the client's like, oh, this isn't what I expected. I don't like it. And so what do you do? How do you handle these difficult situations? Because I know that when I first started out, I took everything super personally. Like everything was a personal affront to me. Like they don't like me as a human. I'm a bad person. Bear with me, but because I think some of you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, and, and, and it starts to sour your relationship in your own mind, right? And then what I think the tendency can be, because this was my tendency. Hold on while I take a sip of my coffee. Sorry, tea, I mean. Is the tendency is to get super defensive and shut down. Like, I have no, like you lose a sense of self-worth um, because you feel like it's a personal attack, right? It's not. It has actually nothing to do with you and everything to do with them. So if the client isn't happy, we need to find a way to solve the problem. So here are my tips on navigating a difficult situation and dealing with an unhappy client. And actually, before I dive in, I just want to say, if you're in our designer meetup group on Facebook, Um, And I'll link that here. If you're not already a member, you can come join it. It's free. Uh, I would love for you guys to share some stories. Like, have you had difficult situations and what did you do to fix it? Or are you going through something and do you need help? Like post what you're going through. People already do this. And this is also sort of why it kind of sparked the the thought process behind doing a podcast for this, because it's clearly something that designers use Facebook groups, especially this designer meetup one, to to really um, ask for help from other design professionals. So go on in there, post your question. What are you going through? How can we help you? In a more specific, this is going to be more broad, but this applies to every situation that you will ever deal with with a client. Okay, so here we go. My first tip is don't immediately react when you hear about the problem. What I mean by that is don't immediately go, oh my God, yeah, you're right. Or, oh, that's not right. Or I think you're wrong. Or whatever your reaction, you have like a gut instinct, right? You have an instinct and a reaction within you. You can't react. If you want to get through this alive, you have to stop and you have to listen. It's hard It's really hard. Our our desire, I think, is to immediately fix. Fix, fix, fix at all costs. I'll throw all the money at it. I just want you to like me. I just want you to be happy. I don't care if I lose money, right? I'm just gonna, oh, whatever. Like, I'll convince the contractor to not charge anything. Like, whoa. First, you just need to listen. 
And then while you're listening, I want you to put yourself in their shoes. So if it's an email that you've received, which is probably the most common way that we get these customer complaints, because often clients are much braver via email than they are in person. I used to work for a designer and we had a client who would only ever, you know, say something like, I don't think I should pay this bill in an email. And then when confronted one-on-one was like, okay, yeah, I'll go get the checkbook. Like people can sometimes put on this brave front in an email. So I encourage you when you receive that email, that phone call, that in-person conversation where they're not happy, stop and listen. Like stop, drop and roll. (laughs) First stop. I'm not suggesting, suggesting stop dropping and rolling away because I feel like that's the wrong response, but you should definitely stop and listen. If it's an email, read it and do not respond immediately. Do not. Put those handcuffs on. Sit on your hands. Do not respond to that email. Now, immediately, I want you to put yourself in their shoes. And this can be challenging because we are in our own shoes and we see things from our own perspective but I want you, and if you've ever lived through a design or a decor project yourself or a renovation or a build, then you will. it'll be easier for you to do this. I can tell you now that I've had some experience in a reno, I see it very different than I did before. Um, <clears throat> but do your best to put yourself in their shoes. Take a beat. There's this thing in acting where it's like, they, it's called like a beat, right? And a beat is basically a pause where no one's like talking. And there's power in taking that beat. When you pause, the other person feels like they're being heard. And this is especially true when it's in person or on the phone. Um, With email, like don't wait too long because then it looks like you're ignoring them, (laughs) right? Uh, And don't disagree right away. Don't get defensive. One of the worst things you can do when a, when a customer is unhappy is to get defensive. And we know that. We know this because we've seen this with our own trades. Like, I've had so many experiences, oh my gosh, with like cabinet makers who I say, like, this isn't, um, I don't know, like, th- this is not how we talked about the drawers being or whatever. And they get super defensive. Well, your drawings didn't indicate da da da. That is the wrong way to respond when a client is unhappy. Even if the client is wrong, you can't get defensive, okay? So that's sort of the first thing you need to do is stop. The next thing, I guess you could call it number two, would be clearly repeat back to the client and clearly identify the problem. So the first thing you do is you want to stop and you want to listen. And then the second thing is you want to say, okay, I see that the paint is bubbling or um, I, what I hear from you is that you are, you're, that you don't like the variation in tone. You're not going to jump right in and say, well, I showed you this. This was in the presentation. You agreed to this. Um, I told you this. Like we looked at it at the show, whatever. You don't. You're just going to listen and then you're going to clearly identify what to make sure that you're on the same page. Because sometimes what happens, we get into this defensive like anger zone and and we can't, we're not really listening. So we haven't really listened in the first place. And so we actually interpret the problem sometimes as a slightly different than what the client sees. Because if you listen carefully, you might find that it's not really the color variation that she doesn't like in the floor. It's the fact that in this one area of the kitchen, it looks too dark, right? So you might miss, if you don't listen, you might miss the key element in what they're trying to tell you. Because sometimes it's a much easier fix than you might initially think. Because we always go to the worst. We're like, worst, oh my God, worst case scenario. And like, I do it You're like, in your head, right? You're like, oh my God, this floor was so expensive. It was like $15 a square foot and I'm going to have to pay for a whole new floor. Oh my God, oh my God. This is like how many, that's $10,000. And like you're going through your head and you're like, this is fucking brutal. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to swear. But you know what I mean? You get really worked up. So don't do that. Just listen and then repeat back what you see the problem is. Okay? What I'm going to say right now is you don't offer a solution. Do not offer a solution. Right, right away, you're just going to identify the problem. And I will tell you, sometimes it's small and it's easy and it's a very obvious solution. That's when you can then jump in and say, 
Here's what we can do. But here's a word of advice. If you don't immediately know the best solution, don't offer the solution. You need to take a beat, right? If it's not clear cut, you're unsure, or there could be options, don't jump right in and offer the options. I need you to make sure you fully understand the issue. So here's an example of something that just happened to us. We were doing a decorating project and the drapery was installed. I wasn't there for the install. Um, one of our design team was, but wasn't there for the whole day. And so initially the client was like, oh, we love our drapes in the living room. They're so lovely. We love the dining room. Um, so great. So, you know, design team leaves, the installer keeps going. <clears throat> and then we get an email from the client that night with a picture of their bedroom. And there was a bulkhead. And the client's like, oh my goodness, we both had such a visceral reaction to the drapery. Like it looks awful. We hate it. Like we're, this is not at all what we pictured. Yeah, right? Not a great email to receive right after you put the kids to bed and you just want to chill out. We didn't respond right away. It was after hours. We never respond after hours. We took a beat. But my immediate reaction was, what the hell? Like, this is exactly, like, it looks amazing. I think it looks great. This is exactly how we designed it. Like, I don't understand what the problem is. And I'm, like, trying to get to the bottom of the problem. I'm talking to people. But I haven't said anything. And then in the morning, I send them an email and I say, along the lines of, you know, thank you for sharing this with us. Um, I'm going to arrange a meeting with the team. I, I'm sorry, I'm arranging a time to come out to site so that we can troubleshoot. Okay, I'm not offering solutions. I'm not validating how they feel yet because it's not necessarily, um, it's not necessarily that they're right and we're wrong. So I want you to be careful with that. Don't be so quick to jump in and apologize. If you jump in and apologize, it makes it look like you have done something wrong and the focus is on the mistake and not on the solution. Now, I'm going to get to apologies. Apologies are very important. We'll get to that in a minute. But don't immediately say, oh my God, you're, so, oh my God, I'm so sorry that you don't like them. I'll find a way to fix it. Nah, not the best way to respond. I know it's counterintuitive, right? You just want to people please. You want them to be happy. So, one, <clears throat> pause. Don't react or get defensive. Listen and take a beat. Two, clarify or identify the problem, right? The problem is, is you're not happy. I'm like, it's, um, we, like, it's clear that you're not happy with the drapery. So let us come to site to troubleshoot, okay? Then <clears throat> you need to come up with a solution. And I like to do these solutions behind the scenes and not in front of the client. So what is the solution? Sometimes the solution is simpler than your immediate gut reaction assumes. And that's why I think it's important to take the time. So in the case of the drapery, before I, so I arranged to go to site. It was like two days later, I could get to site with our drapery installer. It was really important that I brought him with me, made it look like we really had our shit together. I had a team internal meeting and I said, what went wrong? What's going on? Why is the client not happy? So we looked back at our presentation documents and we noticed we didn't actually do a proper rendering uh, or elevation of that wall to showcase that there was a bulkhead and there was a stationary panel below the bulkhead and then functioning um, drapery. And so I could see how the client didn't understand what it was going to look like, even though I remember verbally explaining it. And so I realized, okay, you know what? In future, we need to be much more clear with how we're doing this. That said, like, what are the solutions? Uh, it is, it's not, it also, the description was in the proposal, was very clear stationary panel. So we had that to back us up, but we didn't use that. We came up with three solutions. One, client keeps it as is, which we knew wasn't going to happen. Uh, two was to lower the drapery so that it was all below the bulkhead, but we didn't like that idea. So what we did is we mocked it up in Photoshop so that they could see we brought to bring with us. And then the other solution was like, remove it all together and come up with a new idea. Maybe Romans, maybe you just do the roller, something like that. 
So I went there, I had a powwow with my drapery installer before I got to site to explain the situation. I said, this is what's going on. Like let's, and he was like, yep, I'm going to support you and back you up. This is the best way to do it in this scenario. We got to the house and I was like, okay, let's look at the, let's look at the drapery. And the client's like, oh, and then, and I just listened again. I just listened. They were clearly not happy. So me pushing them to try to convince them to like it was not going to work. I did say this is exactly how it was designed and these are the reasons we did it, right? Um, however, your thought, and then the client said something like, well, let's just lower it. I said, you know what? We actually, we considered that. Here is, and I showed them on my iPad, here's kind of a mock-up of what that would look like. And it actually, what do you think? And they're like, huh, yeah, it looks different than I thought it would. I'm like, yeah, I, well, here are the reasons that we don't like that. And then in the end, with the client, we came up with a better solution, which was remove the stationary panel, move all the panels to one side. We're going to do a hold back. It's going to be lovely. But it was a perfect example of how cool, calm, and collected Rebecca, which is a new version of me, was able to show up and come up with a solution without getting defensive, without offering to pay for a replacement, because it technically wasn't our fault, right, that they didn't like it. Um... And it worked out for the best. That was the solution we came to. Here is another situation that I think will be helpful. I'm going to read you verbatim an email to a client who was having frustrations with us and blaming every tiny little thing on um, on us. That was not was had nothing to do with us. Had to do with plumbing. It had to do with a shower head that they thought was like we'd pick the wrong shower head to go for that um, in their situation, and it made us start to second guess our ability as a designer. So the client sent an angry email saying that this is our mistake. That we should not be going back to the supplier, and that we need to fix our mistake, and and that we don't know how to do our job. It was very angry. It was awful. I cried. It was terrible. It was terrible. And it made me second guess. So what did I do? I looked into the solutions and I thought, okay, this is crazy. I'm going to reach out to my rep. What's going on? Sure enough, we get photos to document. This is the right type of shower head. The issue is just with the pressure. Um, you know, da, 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 da. It was one of those things that was quickly and easily solvable, but the client turned a, made a mountain out of a molehill. So this time it was via email. So I emailed the client back and in response, I didn't have, I'm just going to read it to you. Okay. Here's what I said. Obviously without any names. <laughs> I said, thank you for your email. We take our clients' problems very seriously and always work to resolve issues in a timely manner. We are honored that you chose to work with us on this renovation and would very much like to keep you as a satisfied client. I understand your frustration with the shower not functioning properly. Renovations are stressful and a myriad of issues invariably pop up. We are working with our supplier to get to the root of the issue and solve this problem. Rest assured we will take care of this for you and not leave until we are all satisfied. Regards, Rebecca. The client was over the moon with this response and wrote back saying, yes, you are very professional and I appreciate that. I'm just frustrated, as you can tell. Uh, thank you for making it right. So I would say that was a big effing win. But what I would like to highlight about this email that I sent is that I didn't say specifically what the solution was. I just tried to reassure her. I listened to her that I could see she was frustrated, right? I then reassured her, and this is the next thing, is that I reassured her that we are there with them till the end to problem solve. That is who we are. Uh, and that it will get resolved. And I remind them that we have their best interests at heart. We want it to look amazing and function and everything to work really, really well. We are a team player. Hopefully that email is good. You guys might want to take some notes. Um, but I think it was really, it was kind of game changing for us with this particular job. Um, it helped to kind of squash a lot of concerns. And in the end, it was nobody's fault. 
at all. It was the water pressure in the house um, because it was an old house. So it was one of those things where they jumped to conclusions and we felt very defensive internally, but I made it very clear effort to ensure that my email to them in response was not defensive. So stop, don't react right away. Clearly identify the problem. Show them that you've listened. Don't offer a solution on the spot. Troubleshoot solutions behind the scenes so that you can present it to the client and remind them that you have their best interests at heart. And then the very last tip I'm going to say is apologize respectfully if it is something you have done wrong. I think it's really important. There are times where we do screw up. And you have to own that. If you can't own your mistakes, you're not going to be successful running a service-based business. You have to own your mistakes. And then sometimes you do have to pony up the money to fix it. That's when you then go the extra mile, right? You go that extra mile because you know what? You're right. I, you know, I respectfully, I apologize that we did not order enough tile, you know? Or I apologize, I don't know, that was maybe a bad example. Um, There's gotta be something where maybe we, something got installed wrong or the table came and it's the wrong size. Whatever it might be, nobody values someone who points fingers. I'll tell you that. Well, it's his fault, he didn't read our drawings. No, 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 either you take care of it and you don't have to apologize, it's not really anyone's fault, right? Like with the shower situation or the drapery situation. But if it is your fault, you have to, you have to apologize respectfully and remind them that you are there to take care of everything. Remind them that these happen, um, but that you have, you've got their back, right? And then go that extra mile to ensure that things get rectified and always do it in a timely manner. It has to be done right away. You can't let problems sit without response. When I say as the first tip is to stop and pause, I mean like pause for a few minutes or a couple hours. I don't mean pause for a week, right? Okay. (sighs) Well, there you have it, guys. I hope that was helpful. Um, Those, that's just like tip of the iceberg, as you know. Join our Facebook group if you're not already a member. Share what you're going through. There's lots of designers, including myself, there to help troubleshoot and help you work through these situations. Um, because I know there are many of these and they will not end ever. So it's finding out the best way to deal with the unhappy client. That's it, guys. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you soon.